So in the last video, we introduced a bunch of the basics for using nodes on clips inside of the Fusion page. Now that we've talked a little bit about vector shape nodes, though, let's introduce how to create a new Fusion title from scratch. So if we go over to the edit page, what you're probably going to want to do creating a new title is to make it independent of the underlying clip. Uh, you would want a type. You would want a title to be movable. You would want a title to be able to be moved and adjusted independently of whatever is underneath it. So the way we can do that is by using a fusion composition clip, and we can find that on the effects library over in FX and then fusion composition. So this is essentially a completely blank clip where if we go over to the fusion page it's only going to have a media out node by default. So there is no media in at least initially. So I'm going to drag this onto the timeline where I would want to create a title. Uh, we can go over to this title, zoom in a bit. By default, these fusion composition clips are going to be five seconds long. So if you want a longer title, you may want to take the edge here and increase the duration of the title. But in many cases, five seconds is actually a pretty good number. So I'm going to control Z and leave it as a five second clip. Now let's go over to the fusion page and we can start working on a title. So over on the fusion page, you have two options for how you want to set up your text nodes. If you want to create a full 3D scene, there are 3D shapes over on the right, including text nodes here. So in 3D space, you can get a perspective view on your text rather than an orthographic view as you move items around in 3D. And you can also add lighting to your text objects since they are 3D objects. If you've ever played around with another program like Blender for 3D modeling, it's very similar to that, just you can't actually model inside of Fusion. And the last thing I want to point out right now is that if you set up any 3D nodes, they do have to go through a 3D renderer to take the 3D scene and turn it into a 2D image before it goes to media out. But in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to use a text plus node over here on the left. Because with this effect that we're going to create, we don't actually need any of the extras that you get with the 3D scene. And in fact, if you don't need those extras, having a 3D scene is going to bog down the performance of your rendering by quite a lot. So if you just want your text to be kind of flat and basic, then uh, you'll get better performance with text plus. Since it's not a 3D scene, it's 2D. So I'm going to click on text plus here to create a text node. I can left click on the left view circle to pop it on the left side, and we can write some text for our node. So I'll go ahead and type in resolve 17. We can select a font for our text. So I'm a big fan of Babis Kai. Let's try that one out, increase the size. And uh, because this is a 1920 by 1080 pixel frame, it's gonna be pretty consistent over here with what we're going to get in the media out when we connect everything together. So because I know we're going to add some extra uh, vector shapes to this setup, for the title, let's go ahead and click on a merge node, this time doing it with the toolbar as a shortcut. And now I can take the merge and put that to the media output. The only thing I might want to change here is making the text, the foreground, the green connector rather than the background connector. Uh, the reason for that is so that the text shows above any of the shapes that are in the background if they happen to overlap later on. So let's disconnect this node, text one to merge, by left clicking on the right side of that connector. And then let's take the output connector, the gray box, and connect that to the green. And when we have our vector shape node set up, that will go in here to the yellow connector. So I'm going to right click, let's go to add tool and let's grab a shape. Let's try out ingon. So an ingon is a polygon that has n number of sides. So anything from three to 20, I believe is the max and resolve. And then we'll be able to use that as the shapes. So we could have four sides for a rectangle, three for a triangle, six for a hexagon and so on. Let's also right click and add tool, go to shape and then S render. So if I connect the ingon to the S render, we can put this on the right view. So left clicking on the right view circle and connect this to the merge. Okay, so you can see for the ingon that we have six sides here, we can adjust the position, the size or the rotation angle of our shape. So maybe I'll play around with that a little bit. Kind of looks like a honeycomb. Why don't we try the grid node again? I'm gonna right click on the line in front of the ingon go to add tool shape and now we have a bunch of this shape on the screen but they're way too big i can also control 
and zoom out with middle mouse wheel to see the full frame up here. So I'm going to shrink the size of each of these ingons. So let's drop it down to something way lower until all of the shapes fit onto the screen. Maybe I will type in the size and make it 0.15 for width and 0.15 for height. So the sides are equal with each other so the shape doesn't get warped or stretched too much. What I might also want to do is preview the shapes with the text together. So hovering over the media out one node, I can put this as the left preview. And now we can see both the text and the white shapes at once. White with white is going to make it very hard to read what's going on here. So I'm also going to change the color for the vector shapes. So under style, let's go ahead and give it a different color by moving the sliders around. So that's kind of a cool pinkish red there. Now we can see the white text against those red shapes is much easier to read. Now note one of the advantages of this grid node is that whatever you change to the first node is also going to affect all of the other nodes in the grid. So you change once and it's going to apply to all nine of these nodes. So why don't we go to frame 24 for this title here, which is one second in our project. I'm going to keyframe the width, the height and the angle there. So that's going to be the base setting for how it looks for our clip. But we'll go to frame zero in the fusion timeline here, and we can adjust those settings. So if we want to have the ingons be smaller at the start of our title animation, I could put 0.01 here and then 0.01 for height as well. Now, if I hit play, the size of those ingons is going to get bigger across this one second of animation. I can also change the rotation angle. So I'm going to actually just take the angle here and set it to negative 360. I will right click on the arrow to go to that keyframe, the first keyframe we set at 24. And I'm going to actually unkeyframe it here because what I want to do is to have the hexagons rotating for the entire duration of this clip. So going to frame 119 now, let's take the angle and type in something like 720. So if we go from negative 360 to 720, that's three full rotations. Every 360 degrees is a full rotation. If we go to frame zero now and hit play, we should have rotating hexagons for the entire duration of our title. Other things we could keyframe could be the color. So if I go and keyframe the color at frame 24, I can go to frame zero now and change it to something else. Let's say black maybe and hit play, and the color is going to animate between those two values. So going to frame zero again, hitting play, and you can see how it kind of fades in over time as the black goes to having an actual color of the red. So now we can actually edit the title a bit more. We might want to add a right on right off effect, or maybe we could go to shading and add some drop shadow to this text to make sure that it is very readable against the background shapes. So on shading, I will go to select element and choose three, which is where you'd find black shadow and enable it. So now we have a text with some shadow here. It's quite strong though. So I might lower the alpha of that shadow down so that it is less dramatic. We can just leave it there. Now on the text node, Let's animate the title in an effect where we can have it uh, bounce up and down in terms of size. So at frame zero, let's go to layout tab here. So let's set our base keyframe at frame 24. And I'm going to keyframe the size here. And what we'll do is have the size of the text bounce every 12 frames or so, half a second. So at frame 12, we have it at about 0.2 size. And it's going to animate up here to this value. Let's copy that same size value over to frame 36, the point 0.2. So I'm going to control V paste it in here. And now our text should be bouncing a little bit in terms of its size. Let's just say we want this to occur for the entire video clip. So we can copy the keyframes around. So if I open up the keyframes panel in the top right hand corner, let's zoom in here a bit, go to the start, and then we can see these keyframes as these little notches. So if I expand text one, I can click on these keyframes and then copy them around. So I'll copy the keyframe at frame 24 with control C. You left click it, you hit control C. And now let's go to frame zero in this little timeline and control V paste it in at frame zero. So if I want to copy and paste one of these keyframe points, I can select it and then do right click and then choose copy points from the menu. 
go here to frame zero, 12 seconds before that low point, right click and do paste points and value. So now we have four keyframes. If I hit play, we should get two bounces there and we can keep this going as well. It, it does look like I pasted it in two frames too far in the future. So you can actually left click on these keyframe notches and drag them to where you need them to be. So this should be at frame zero. Uh, now that all four of these are lined up properly, I can select all four of them at once and then we can right click, do copy points and we can keep duplicating that for the rest of our timeline. So let's go to frame 48, 12 frames after the end of the first one. And then we can paste all of the points in again. So I'm going to right click and do paste points and value. So that gives us another four keyframes. Let's go another step further. But up here at the end, we have frame 88. So I guess we'd be looking at frame 99. And then we can paste it in again to add even more keyframe points. And we don't exactly need to worry about removing the extras at the end. You could. But if the title effect is only rendering to frame 120 here, then these then these keyframes are just never going to actually render fully. It'll stop right here where it's expanding at the end again. So let's go to the start here and hit play. We can kind of watch our little animation here. Now, there's just one thing about this, which is that the speed of the bounces is linear. In many cases, for like a bouncing ball or that sort of thing, you might actually want ease curves to make it look a little bit more realistic where it's fastest when it's popping out and then slowest when it is far in the background. So let's pop open the spline editor in order to control those curves. So opening spline and I'll close keyframes. Now we want to toggle on text one size here. So inside of the spline graph editor, so by the nature of slowing down these low points where the size of the text is small, it's going to speed up the points on top because the size is still going to animate to the same value over the same duration. So if part of that transition is slow, the other part has to be fast to make up for it. So to grab all of these bottom points, you can drag a box, left click, hold, and then drag a box around these bottom six points. If you miss one or two, you can hold control down and add extra points to your selection. But just in this case, make sure you get the bottom six points here. So now with these bottom six points, I'm going to click on this smooth operator on the bottom left of the spline window. And you can see how this flattens out the curve on the bottom points, but makes the size rise a little sharper. That indicates moving faster. When it's going up or down, it's going to be moving fast. When it goes left and right, it's not really adjusting the size in this case. So let's go to the start here and hit play. And we should be able to see how when it gets small, the speed of the change slows down. So it looks a lot more bouncy than it did before. And that's one way you can use splines in order to adjust how your animation is going to look. You could also do the same adjustments to the rotating ingons in the background if you wanted to so that everything's bouncing up and down. The last thing I really want to point out for this video is how you can actually save a title for reuse. So over on the edit page, we have this fusion composition clip now. So you can see everything outside of the title is just black because there's nothing behind it. If I move the fusion title over here to the left, then we can actually see our title layering on top of everything. I mean, that looks pretty messy with what we added on the background video. <clears throat> so not the ideal candidate. What we want to do is to take this fusion composition clip and save it for later. Now, if I go to the media pool, you'll see here I have something called uh, power bins and then the master power bin. You won't see that by default. How you open it up is you go to view at the top and then you go down here to show power bins and you check it. So what the power bin is, is a resource folder that is shared across your resolve projects automatically. So if you save something to the power bin and then you open up a new project, that same fusion composition, adjustment clip, uh, anything else should be usable inside of that project. So if I click on the master power bin here, which is the one, which is the main one by default, you can also right click and create sub bins if you need to. All you need to do to save it to the power bin is to drag it in. So if I left click on this fusion composition and I just drag it into the power bin, left click hold and then let go in power bin, then that is going to save that fusion composition for later reuse. Now, in this case, fusion composition doesn't really help us to really understand what is in here. We can hover over the effect to kind of see our title there. So if you want to rename it, left click on the fusion composition and then left click down here on the text in order to change the title name here. So I'm going to call this uh, tutorial title. So now we can hover over it and also see the title and 
have a decent idea of what that is about. And so now that we have the title saved here, we can go into a new project. So I'll just call a new project Power Bin Test. If I left click on the Power Bin now, we should see our tutorial title. So we can drag it into the timeline and use it just as if we had it in the other project. And because we saved it as a fully editable Fusion Composition clip, we can take this even in our new project on the timeline, go over to the Fusion page and continue editing it to customize it for this project. So we have all of the same nodes and nothing is stopping us from adding extras or taking away nodes that we no longer want or need. So that in a nutshell is how you can create a simple title inside of Resolve and also save it for reuse for your future projects.